Hello, friends, and welcome to TechSags Rewind. I am David Nuno. I am joined by my partners out there at the uh, Angry Elephant News and Social Center, Matthew Dawson and Nick Savage. Nick, favorite part of the show? Uh, when uh, Billy didn't come in. I'm just kidding. Uh, probably Buzz Williams talking about Billy Lucci. Uh, that was very, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you'd say, but it was funny. It was funny. I love when Buzz, I don't want to say breaks character, but, you know, he's so analytical and, you know, He's got uh, this inspirational speak, and then all of a sudden he can break character and go right into uh, Riven and Billy. It was great. Dawson, what was your favorite part? I really liked Andrew Monaco. Um, I feel like he always comes in, and he always has something like new to say, like some new perspective that I just had never even considered. So I, I like the way that he talks about a basketball. My brother uh, was listening midway through. He, I guess he'd listened midway through, and he was like, hey, who's that guy with the awesome voice? I was like, dude, that's Andrew Monaco, the best. Go. Right? He is the voice of the Aggies. For a reason, and I know Nick. For somebody who's trying to be uh, a legendary play play by play broadcaster, uh, I know you take your notes from him. All right, so on the show today, Tom Hart, we liked him. Ob, he was pumping sunshine. We're all about the sunshine. Uh, we had Andrew Monaco, and uh, a lot more than that here on the Tech Shacks Rewind. Check it out. <laughs> you guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I- I'm telling you. We talked about it all, all year. This started a long time ago. You're built for this. You're built for this, man. And look what you guys did. You went out there and the what? It's another f***ing hot team that we knocked off. It's the next hot team that you knock off. Do you know how hard it is to win this f***ing league in the playoffs? Yes, sir. Do you understand what you're doing right now? Yes, what we're capable of? That's two. All right? That's two. We got two to go. With a bye in the middle. With a bye in the middle. I am unbelievably proud of everybody in here, man. Coaches, players. That's a way to mount up, man. That's not a, that's a, that's a fucking difficult team to beat, man. All right, I got one game ball. Man, in the game, need to fucking play. Derek Barnes. Pretty cool. Pretty First cool. Of all, uh, I, I would love to play for Dan Campbell, not that I do anything well. But if I could, I would love to play for a coach like Dan Campbell. And it's interesting how many talk shows right now, uh, Nick, you can jo- join us on this, have revisited his opening day press conference. And if you listen to Aggies, like we all, like day one, we we knew. I don't know if we knew there would be in the NFC Championship game, but we knew this guy had something special. And it's interesting have, seeing these media members having to eat a little crow right now. Oh boy, they eat a lot of crow. Um yeah, it was easy to laugh at the biting the kneecaps and ankles and all those things. Uh, but you know what? Uh, not literally, but figuratively, that's what that team does. And there's yep. a there's a cliche in sports that a team takes on the personality of its coach. And I think nowhere do you see that cliche being uh, – being, uh, justified is not the word I want – reinforced – than in Detroit with Dan Campbell. How hard is it for a guy in your role and all the analysts around the country to evaluate football teams in January heading into the next season, considering like, like we, I mean, you may add a lot of talent. That talent may not work. There's so much change. Like, I don't know what to think of this team, that team, uh, unless they're bringing back the bulk of their players with all these changes. I don't know how to evaluate. Uh, it's a, it's a fool's errand, David. It's like, Listen, I grew up in the Midwest. It'd be like shoveling your driveway in the middle of a snowstorm. Just wait. Just wait for everything to settle, all the snow to come down, figure out where you stand after that. Alabama is a great example, right? I mean, if you judge Alabama right now, you would say based on the talent that they lost, the change of leadership, all of the other adjustments going on in that program, that's a middle-of-the-pack SEC roster. And it probably is as of today. And middle-of-the-pack meaning – bottom of the great teams. But what's going to happen after spring practice? I mean, they're going to continue to get guys to the portal right now. And then as soon as the second portal window opens, there's going to be some real dudes. They're going to backfill those, those empty spots. Um, I think the difference now, especially Alabama's feeling it, uh, Georgia's actually felt it relative to their success is what everybody else has had to go through. Uh, remember Alabama over the last couple of years took Georgia Tech starting running back, uh, Tennessee starting middle linebacker. You know, they, they just were able to pick and choose from other 
big name programs, Power Five programs, and now it's being done to them. It's a little unfamiliar and uh, I'm sure uncomfortable for that Alabama fan base. But don't even try right now. So it's like judging a, a big league team based on spring training when every starting pitcher is just going out there working on their changeup. You know, as long as everybody's healthy, wait and see what the roster looks like uh, once we get in and out of spring, and that'll be a, give us a better feel. What are some of the, the the vibes that you are getting and some of the changes maybe that you can notice right away? Uh, he's hardly there. He wasn't. You talk about hitting the ground running. I'm not sure that's even appropriate for what <laughs> – he has done since uh, after the after the Texas Bowl, but even before that. So on December twenty eighth, he took over right at whenever that building opened. It, he he would be there. But I think the relationship, the reaching out early to your own team, making sure that everyone stays. Because look, in this day and age, you've got to recruit your own eighty five every single day this isn't a signing period this isn't an early signing period it, it has to be every day and i think his familiarity david really helps with that to be able to walk into that room and know most of those players i i think helps so now what do you do next to the transfer portal keeping guys as well as guys leaving it's it's two-way but that's two jobs there reaching out to the texas high school coaches association to make sure that you have that relationship, not just for the early signing period that was in December, not just for February's signing day, but that is that relationship will continue throughout. You win the state of Texas, right? You have to do that. This isn't just a Texas program. This is a national program. So you have to reach out across the country and find the best talent. What, he's, what the, he and the staff have done in the transfer portal, you have to address what are you deficient in your program. And they have done that. Now, we're going to see throughout spring camp, we're going to see now with these guys, it, it's one thing to get the commitment. It's another to get them on campus, right? That, so that's that's another move. But he seems to have knocked out. There's, there's each of these mile posts, mile signs, whatever you want to call them, that this has to be done now. And you have to also look in the future. But this has to be done now. This has. It's not myopic. There's still a bigger picture. But I think he's been able to do that. Do it methodically. Do it well. And understand from staff to players to having the setup. And then the excitement now is I'm not sure they, they can wait patiently for spring ball to put it all into action. Your teams are always very good defensively, but you've you've been, especially at the end of the Kentucky game and the end of this LSU game, the defense has certainly been on point at the end of games. We have done uh we've done a really good job defensively. Um I think I think the one thing that I would say that has helped us defensively this season thus far in conference play is we have defensive rebounded the ball better than we have since we moved here. Uh, we defensive rebounded 90% of Arkansas's misses on uh, Tuesday, and we defensive rebounded 83% of LSU's misses on Saturday. Uh, we, we, we are good on the offensive glass and I like some of the things that we're doing defensively before the shot goes up. And I think we're improving in some of those ways, but when you can finish the possession with a defensive rebound, it just makes everything look better. And that's why in the categories that matter defensively, we're rising. It's not because we were doing anything different before the shot goes up. It's we're, we're finishing the possession with a rebound. And so that's for sure helped us. And we've got to continue along that track. Talking to Buzz Williams here on Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. Buzz, another thing that I found interesting as well is that even without Wade and Henry out there for big chunks of time, uh, the team was able to get it done. And those are like two of your team leaders. Uh, a, a few things. Number one, I didn't know that Texas A&M had never won consecutive years at LSU. Does that mean since Texas A&M joined the SEC? Is that what that means? I believe that's what it means. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the second thing is, is uh, I love David Gardner. I've only seen him twice, so I don't know what that means that he sponsors the show, but thank you. And then the next thing is, <laughs> is, is, uh, is Lucci, 
is Lucci leaving Detroit and going straight to San Francisco, or is he going to stop through in College Station? All right, Dawson's Creek, tell the people what to do. Well, you got to like, you got to comment, and you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you guys watch this rewind and other rewinds and all future rewinds. Nick, can you do your impersonation of Matthew Dawson telling the people what to do? All right, let me try. You got to like, you got to subscribe, you got to, <laughs> whoa, my ca oh, there's my camera. You got to like, you got to subscribe. It's like really twitchy too. Not a bad thing, Matthew, by the way. We were talking about that back here. His, he's very, uh, I can't forget the word I use, but he's very, uh, and wi he wired. Perfect way to describe Matthew Dawson at the News and Social Center. Wired, and we need that on Tech Sags. Wired Alex. with a plethora of knowledge. You Absolutely. Like. It almost sounded like Donald Trump. You, Nick, doing a Donald Trump You gotta like, probably, you got it. there are probably some of the best people out there. These are people that are saying, you know, people are saying I'm the best. Probably. The best rewind. You got to watch it. Many people are saying it's maybe the best rewind they've ever seen. It's bigly, bigly likes, bigly views. You never, you're going to get so tired of watching rewinds. Oh, man. That so was keep, so good keep until liking. the very end where Nick started becoming himself mixed in with Donald. It started off like Donald. Good stuff, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.